Hi, Misha here. And quite frankly, I just wanted an excuse to shoot some Benelli's. And uh, we had an impromptu range trip. And so I grabbed at first the good old M4 or M1014. And then I thought at the very last minute, why not grab the M2? This is the tactical or law enforcement variant. And the reason I decided to take both, aside from they're both fun in different ways, is because sometimes customers ask me, which Benelli should I get? And is the M4 worth it? The M4 is significantly more expensive than an M1 or M2. You can usually pick up an M2 new for about $1,200-ish, maybe a bit more for tactical, you know, features, sales, that kind of thing. Whereas an M4, your basic civilian model is going to be at least sixteen, maybe eighteen hundred, with the police model bumping two grand. So a lot of people want to know is the extra money worth it? And that's difficult to answer because everyone has their own needs, of course. So I thought we would take both to the range, shoot them back to back. And then come back here and talk about a little bit of history and features and maybe try to help out a bit. Which one might be more for you? Or maybe not a Benelli at all. Maybe a Mossberg. But yeah, let's first get out to the range. And then we'll come back here to the table. Benelli M4. The biggest problem with me shooting this is just trying to figure out how to chamber it for the first time. Every time. I always have to think about it. I figured it out. Clear. Oh, and I've been dang it. You good? The Nelly M4. Don't held open. A little different than those pistols. Yeah. Benelli M2. Clear. Benelli M2. Okay. Back here now. Just a disclaimer, it really doesn't need to be said with Benelli's, but um, both were 100% reliable, even with the essentially plinking ammo we use when we're just having fun. Just Walmart value pack, Federal Winchester, whatever it is we grabbed that day. The M2 here is... The modernized version of the original M1. The M1 Benelli came out with in the early 80s and introduced. Originally, it was imported by HK as the Super 90 shotgun. And it uses essentially a patented inertia driven recoil system. It has a multi lug rotating bolt like your AR 15. But it uses the energy of the round being fired to essentially agitate that bolt into turning and thus unlocking. So it is a locked breech, but it does not use a gas system. It just uses essentially tension. Totally different system, but kind of a similar concept to an HK roller lock. Which, you know, isn't exactly a locked breech either, but yeah. They mostly make the M1 and M2 
in 12 gauge, although I do believe they've done some 20 gauge in others, especially in the sporting models. These are built on an alloy receiver, which is kind of funny because people often think that Remingtons are superior to Mossbergs because Mossbergs are on an alloy and Remingtons are steel, and yet Benelli considered one of the highest quality shotguns in the world, at least for tactical purposes, are also on an alloy receiver. And that's because the receiver really doesn't matter in a shotgun because the bolt locks into barrel extension. And of course the barrel is steel. The top of the receiver is drilled and tapped so you can attach a rail. And of course they have tons of sporting models, but let's talk about the tactical it has adjustable ghost ring sights. These can be had with night sights if you desire. The adjustments, the way they do the heads of the screws, are the size of the rim of a shotgun shell. But So in a pinch, you don't need a tool. You can just use a shotgun shell to adjust. The tactical versions have an 18 and a half inch barrel, chrome lined. They most often have screw-in chokes, although some versions have a fixed improved cylinder bore choke. See the raised front side there. These are of course rated for two and three quarters as well as three inch magnum. They have ambidextrous sling swivels. By that, that means the sling swivel can be reversed up here and the buttstock has a swivel on each side. Typical Benelli controls, tubes, the usual, cross bolt safety, last round hold open, so on and so forth. The tactical model, or the police model of the M1 and the M2, has an extended tube. Originally, this tube, if it ends here, only holds three shells and they make a plus two extension which takes it to five or they have the plus four which takes it to seven so seven plus one in the chamber yeah also and I don't know if I can really show you on camera but I'll press in the end of the tube is actually kinda open sort of it's interesting there's a cap of course but it's kinda free floated and pressed in a spring tension that's common to all the M1 M2s it's just kind of how they do it the Novas and Supernovas are that way too moving to the back we've got an ergonomic pistol grip kind of oversized then we have a fixed buttstock with a rubber recoil pad and the M1 M2s pretty much all are either going to have a fixed stock like this or what they call a field stock, which is a semi-pistol grip stock. Let's see if I can flip this over effectively on camera. Sometimes I wish Jay was here all the time. I make my life easier. Okay. Not much different to see on this side. You can see there's a small charging handle. Easy to cock back because of the inertia system. We also have a release latch control here. And then there's another one at the trigger. The M2 has this slightly updated handguard, a little easier to grip onto, it's got a very deep finger groove. Having owned an M1 in the past, I can attest this is a better handguard for keeping grip on this. And that's pretty much it guys, uh, internally this is a very simple shotgun, it just has the rotating bolt, head, the carrier if you will. Then there's kind of a rat tail extension that goes into a small tube in the stock with a spring in it. Kind of like an AR, but much smaller. Actually, a lot like an FAL. But, yeah. No gas system. And uh, it's a shotgun. It does shotgun things. The M1 M2s are known for being very lightweight and handy, which has made them very popular with police and sport users. They weigh anywhere from just under 7 pounds to about 8 pounds, depending on how you have them kitted out and which exact variant, you know, how long the barrel, mag tube, that kind of thing, rail or not rail. 
So the, that's really lightweight for a Samada shotgun. Any lighter and it would really kick the tar out of you. And of course, barrel, you know, length depends on the barrel, but it's about 40, maybe 42 inches. That's is here with an 18 and a half. You know, pretty typical length for a tactical shotgun. So yeah, that is the M2. And um, yeah, this was just kind of a facelifted version with some minor changes and updates for the 21st century. But essentially is the same as an M1. Functionally it is the same. Well, let's move on to the M4. Shall we? While the M2 and M1 before it were, or are, I should say, primarily designed and targeted at either the civilian, home defense, tactical, sports market, or law enforcement, who's used a lot of them over the years, the M4 was made specifically for military users. And more specifically, specifically, <laughs> it was made for the U.S. military. In 1998, the military put out requirements for a new joint services combat shotgun, and it was going to be essentially the first semi-auto that the military was going to ever officially adopt for general issuance. Of course, in the past they had had semi-autos like the Savage 720 or the Remington Model 11, M11. But these were not, I mean they were used, they were U.S. property for sure. But they were not really for combat, they were other things and they were kind of temp things. Now this was going to be really for use in the field. And of course several people Several companies submitted designs, including Benelli, who had four prototypes ready by the end of that year, and they were evaluated. And in 1999, they were designated the XM1014, tested out, and then declared the winner. And when that happened, the X got dropped, and that's where M1014 comes from as the official name model designation. The U.S. Marine Corps was the first to receive the new Benelli. They received 20000 about 2001, and more had been purchased. The Marines had probably bought the most, but other branches also officially adopted it. The Army has some. I'm not sure about the Air Force, Coast Guard, and Navy. The Navy seems pretty happy with its Mossbergs, but they all officially have adopted it. And this has seen combat in Afghanistan, Iraq, and elsewhere over the last 20 years. Come to think of it, this gun is now 20 years old. And for the police and civilian market, Benelli labeled this as the M4. Just for completeness sake, the M3 was the so-called convertible shotgun, which could be a pump or semi-auto. But that's a story for another day. What has Benelli done here? Well, the bolt itself is still kind of that inertia-driven bolt, but that wasn't good enough for a military user. They needed better reliability more consistency, so on and so forth. So Benelli, with the M4, it's under the handguards here, made its first ever gas system. It uses two short stroke gas pistons that are self-regulating and self-cleaning. And all the components in here are made of either stainless steel or chrome plated. 
it's a very simple elegant system and since there are two pistons if one gets really gummed up with carbon or whatever the other one still has a fair chance of working and because it still has a similar bolt head that kind of can be agitated back as on the M1 M2 the gun will still probably run even when dirty or with one piston broken and the system in here is very easy to get to all you have to do is unscrew a cap on the barrel pull your barrel off and these hand guards are two piece they come right off and you're right at your gas system to take apart the system you just use your charging handle just pull it out and use it as a tool so very end user serviceable this whole gun is for another the trigger group has one single pin here you just push that out with a bullet tip or again your charging handle your trigger group drops off and then from there you can actually unscrew your pistol grip like most stocks this comes right off we'll get to that in just a second but yeah this is still using the alloy receiver and since this passed the marines you know it's tough it comes standard with a Picatinny rail, a rail interface as Benelli calls it, on top. But it also has standard adjustable ghost string sights. This, these can also be had with tritium inserts. 18 and a half inch barrel is standard. It's a little bit heavier wall than the M1, M2. It is chrome plated. The military version has a fixed choke. But most civilian and police versions, such as this here, have interchangeable chokes. Remember on that M1, M2, the end of the tube here was kind of open with that spring-loaded thing. This isn't. This has a cap to unscrew for easy removal of the barrel. And the tube underneath is solid. Now there's two different types of tube here. The military version has a 7 plus 1 capacity and can have either a single piece tube that runs from here all the way back to here uninterrupted or it can have a two piece tube as this one you see the step up here where this can be unscrewed. This has a big advantage if you have the two-piece tube you can install a short 14 inch barrel because this tube is too long to let a 14 inch barrel or an entry barrel go on you have to go down to here but if you have the two-piece tube you can just unscrew this extension and put on your shorter barrel. So some military users and police users like the two-piece tube for that reason. I also like it because I find it easier to get inside and clean. I have actually had many single-piece tubes in the store here. Thought about putting one on my gun and um, decided now nah, I actually like the two-piece. Uh, just more practical. And again, some military users do use it because they have the 14-inch barrel and they need it. The sling swivel is adjustable with three positions. You can move it to the side or bottom as I have mine. It's actually a swivel, but it also has holes in each end for more of an HK-style hook sling. Hand guards are pretty basic polymer. Trigger guard is metal on mine. Some of the newer ones are polymer. Have the same ergonomic pistol grip as the M1, M2. But then what's not the same is the buttstock. The military needed a collapsing stock. And when this is fully in, you can save up to 8 inches. So it's good for storage. When this was originally made, it was just two positions, in, out. That was it. But 
Benelli would end up putting a third position right in the middle, making this a truly adjustable stock for either short-statured people, like myself, or people wearing body armor. And so I think adding that middle position was just brilliant. And the stock comes off for cleaning very, very easily. And of course your tube with your recoil system is right in here. Got a rubber recoil pad, got a couple of sink swivels. This is our button to collapse the stock. I have to admit, I think this is one of the coolest looking collapsing stocks that's ever made. I mean, there's a certain Italian design aesthetic, don't you think? Just the way they do things. And generally, this gun is just overbuilt for military use. Everything's a little bit thicker and heavier dutier than the M1 M2 but still very similar control layout and all that jazz Benelli M4 one more time and there I collapse the stock in for you couldn't do it while holding the camera because you need to hold the gun it's a very stiff collapsing stock which is good as you can see it's saved quite a bit dimensionally this stock is mostly metal the tube and everything the cheek piece is polymer and the butt plates rubber but the rest is a very metal stock which is good again this was built for militaries and really as I said custom design for them here is the charging handle. If you notice, it's just a tube. <laughs> Little less air, air <laughs> can't talk, elegant than the uh, M1, M2. Controls are the same. We have the release here. Safety's cross pin back here. And the rest. Fully collapsed in, this is a pretty short shotgun, about 34, 35 inches with an 18 barrel. Fully out, a little over 40. Because of the beefed up barrel, the gas system and other beefed up parts, and the stock itself, this is heavier than the M1 M2. This weighs in at about 8.5 pounds, so not exactly a pig, but you know, a pound and a half, at least a pound heavier. Of course, with a shotgun, that does give you the benefit of less felt recoil. And also this gas piston system, which Benelli calls Argo, which stands for Auto Regulating Gas, does make the firing a little more consistent and it allows it to handle a slightly wider range of ammo because it's not just reliant on the inertia. And Benelli advises if you have less lethal rounds like say bean bags to use the charging handle and cycle manually. And before anyone says anything, yes, you can ghost load as they call it. These, it's a little bit tricky. If you don't get it right, you can jam things up. But what that means, you can have seven in the tube one on the elevator, and then one in the chamber for a total of nine rounds. Like I said, it's a little bit tricky. It's not that bad, but a little bit. And if you're using three-inch magnums, you'll have to reduce to six in the tube. Just how it is, because the longer... I mean, they're getting all that in an 18-inch barrel. And, of course, if you go down to the 14-inch, you'll have to sacrifice and have a five shot tube so which is for you well benefits to the M2 M1 M2 uh, cost lighter weight And probably a few more accessories out there for these now. 
benefits to the M4. More durable and product tested. A chunkier, sturdier gun. Probably a hair more reliable. I hate saying that an M1 or M2 isn't reliable, but I have had an M1 or M2 um, kind of stove pipe. I don't want to say jam, but more of a stove top stove pipe. Never really had that with an M4. So I'm going to have to say they are a smidge more reliable. They already come with the pick round top. Most versions, anywho. And of course, you get bragging rights to say you have a 1014, which most people don't. These are only offered in 12 gauge, by the way. Uh, downsides, okay? The M1, M2. You're gonna have more felt recoil, and it's gonna it's gonna kick you a bit more, especially with the shorter barrel. You can get kind of inertia recoil, reducing mercury things that go in the stock. I've never actually owned one. So I don't know. They also make what they call a Comfortech stock that's supposed to help with recoil. Never owned one of those either. And as I said, this one initially, if you just get the sporter version without any extension on it, only holds three shells in the tube. So you really need at least a plus two extension. Also, this open-ended tube might be problematic for some people because it does have a small hole in the middle and it does have the springiness to it so that um, could be an issue you know if you're out in the mud and grime and finally this stock that these come with is long this is about a 14 14 and a half inch pull I can use it but I would prefer it about an inch shorter honestly and this is pretty common for a lot of shotguns so it's not just this one's fault M4 though downsides you are getting more weight which some might not like appreciate It does cost significantly more, no matter which version you go with. There probably are a bit fewer options for upgrades. Certainly fewer barrel options. They pretty much just make these with 18 and 14 inch barrels. That's only, and of course, 14 inch is short barrel shotgun, so that's pretty restrictive. This pretty much is what it is. You're not going to really reconfigure this much. About the most you're going to do is maybe change the top rail or change the handguard. And as purchased, the civilian version will have a, fi a fixed stock. They used to offer a semi pistol grip field stock, but I think these days they just offer essentially the same style of stock with a fix and then a pistol grip that comes on and they come with what looks like a full length tube but it's actually dimpled and hollow out here so in reality it's only a 5 plus 1 even though it looks full length when you get it so you have to add an extension because what's the point of having a hollow tube out here it just looks doofy at least with the M1, M2 you could have the 3 or 5 tube and it looks right but if you get an M4, you got it. You just, you just got it. So you're gonna need to buy an extension. Um, Benelli ones are about a hundred bucks. Uh, other companies like Nordic Products make them. There's different ones. You know, there's, there's at least three or four that I'm aware of. And essentially, it's just a tube, so it's nothing too fancy pants. As for the stock, that's a little more difficult. The good news is the newer versions then by newer I mean like the ones they've been shipping for at least the last 10 years do have the buffer tube under the fixed stock that is fully notched and ready to accept a collapsing stock and in other words they use the same buffer tube receiver extension on all the M4s so it's really a toolless thing 
to take the fixed stock off and put on a collapsing. All you do is you press out this one big pin, your trigger group comes out, then your pistol grip literally spins off, it unscrews, and of course on a fixed stock it's on one piece, so it literally just unscrews, the only thing holding it on is your trigger grip. Then you just screw your pistol grip on and you slide your stock on. Ta-da! Done. The thing is finding these stocks. Benelli, even though it's perfectly legal to have a collapsing stock on a shotgun today, it has been for a very long time now, Benelli has made an internal corporate decision not to sell these stock sets directly to America. When I should say Benelli, it's really more Benelli, or I should say even then, Beretta USA, who actually owns Benelli now. It's more of their decision. It's a corporate thing. Um, dealing with Beretta USA, they're actually very friendly folks, but they have some bizarre ideas about laws. They, they tend to play it safe. They do, they do the same with like the ARX and the CX-4 and all that. Hard to blame them, considering the record with imports, you know, and how much they get shut down. But, um, but yeah, so it's if you find one, perfectly legal. But see, that dates back to the when these were introduced. When the M4 first hit the market, around 2001, I believe, maybe it was 2003, anyway, when it first hit, a little bit after the military guns, we were in the middle of the assault weapons ban. And at that time, shotguns could not have a capacity over five rounds and could not have a folding or collapsing, i.e. adjusting buttstock. So at that time, they really couldn't put these features on their guns and be legal. So what they did, they released a, a U.S. military commemorative version titled XM1014, and it had a big American flag on the receiver. It looked the part of a military gun, but it had a dummy collapsing stock. It looked like a stock that was full out, and you could remove the stock from the tube, but the tube was not notched and grooved to allow it to collapse in and out, so it couldn't go in. It was just full out, and that was that. And also it had that dimpled tube out here, meaning you could only get five shells. So if you see an XM1014, they haven't made them for a number of years, just know if it looks like it has a collapsing stock on it, either it's the original dummy stock or someone went to all the trouble of replacing the receiver extension with the, with the proper one. The problem there is Finding the stocks is not easy. Finding those extensions from the factory is damn difficult because it's not really a part meant to come off this gun. Benelli loctites them and basically stakes them in place there. And since our receiver is alloy, getting them off without mangling the receiver is a challenge. So if someone says they they fix their XM1014 with a collapsing stock, make sure the work was done by a skilled professional, otherwise you might end up buying an expensive gun with a mangled receiver. Just advice, guys. So, they do have the civilian version, as I described, with the tactical stock and the short tube. They also have some law enforcement versions. There are two basic models, the 11 715 with night sights in the 11 721 without. Benelli does not sell these directly to civilians and it's not really legal to import them directly for civilians but what you can do you can buy them either used off police departments or you can get them as essentially surplus to needs new and uh, that basically means let's say police department uh, in uh, I don't know Podo Podunk Arkansas here orders 12 from Benelli. Well, Benelli is going to maybe make 14 to have spares just in case. And then maybe Podunk County Sheriff's there lays off two deputies because, you know, budget cuts. This is uh, 2019 after all. So they only need 10. Okay. Benelli has four extras. So those can be sold because they were imported for police use. The police 
looked at them and said, we don't need them, we don't want them, we don't like them, whatever, then they can sell them off. So sometimes you can find the law enforcement guns, but it's not really an order thing. It's a, hey, these are available, do you want them thing. So as I tell customers, sometimes they come around every month, sometimes I don't see them for six months. It's just one of those things. But they are legal because the features are legal, the 7 plus 1 and the collapsing stock. But Benelli just doesn't want to sell them directly to civilians. Finally, they have done a few versions with all these features. For example, the H2O. But they're very expensive. They're over two grand easy. That's a story for another day, and I've rambled enough. So, which is for you? If cost is a thing, the M1, M2 will serve you very well. And it's a lighter weight gun. But if you want something that will last a long time and will give the best possible reliability and you can afford it as I tell customers I have really never met an unhappy owner of a Benelli M4 if you can swallow the pill of how to pay for this you know buy once cry once type deal the cost is the worst thing about these if you can swallow that Honestly, guys, you're, you're going to be happy. You really are. I've had this one for many years. I guess about eight now. I've been lusting after one since 2003 when they came out. And I saw one in a local store. But it took me well, eight years. 2003, 2011. Yeah, eight years to finally get one. But I did. And uh, I'm never selling it. And what I'm going to do, since this video is long enough, I have a personal channel just under Misha. Over there I'm going to do a story time about my experiences with Benelli's. For example, how me and a college friend from the frat house really bruised ourselves with an M1 tactical way back in the day. And then just basically wax on for way too long about how I'd go to the store and you know, drool over the uh, M4 for many years. But that'll be over on the personal channel if you'd like to check it out. Alrighty, folks. I can't tell you which is best for you, but I hope by outlining the features and showing them both at the range, that um, might help a bit. If you're also looking at the M3, it's essentially this exact same gun. It just has a conversion where you can use the forearm as a pump if you need to use it as a pump. Otherwise, same basic handling and stuff. Well, I really appreciate you tuning in. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support Jay and I, check out the link to our Patreon page. Every bit helps. And if you can't, just sharing the channel is great too. Well, this is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.